Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us. This is an information session about our graduate degrees in nursing here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. We are an online program and I will be telling you a little bit more about all of our different program tracks and I'll be happy to respond to your questions. You can post them in the Q&A button and I will be happy to address them at the end of the session. So my name is Dr. Margaret Riley and I'm the academic director for nursing here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. I've been the academic director for the last seven years. And prior to that, I worked at Queensboro Community College, which is also part of the City University of New York system. I want to talk a little bit about our three graduate tracks that we have here at CUNY School of Professional Studies. Uh, the first being the Master's in Nursing Education. We also have a Master's in Nursing Informatics and one in Nursing Organizational Leadership. And all three of these um, are also available to you as advanced certificate options. So if you already have a Master's in Nursing, uh, then you can take one of these specialty advanced certificate options to add on to your credentials. So why go back and earn a master's degree? Uh, one is to enhance your professional knowledge. Uh, you may want to segue into a new area of professional practice. And so having the knowledge to be able to implement that new area of practice is an important step. So as we mentioned, we focus on nursing education, informatics, and leadership. And those are areas of advanced practice. And we hope that we can provide you with the skills and knowledge necessary for you to be effective. In all three programs, we focus on your leadership skill development because those are important parts of advanced practice nursing. And of course, having the appropriate degree enhances your employment opportunities for uh, the new and emerging roles for advanced practice nurses in our healthcare system. Back in 2011, the Institute of Medicine came out with their Future of Nursing report, and they had four major recommendations that nurses should practice to the full extent of their educational training. Uh, so that includes advanced practice nurses, nurse practitioners, nurse educators, nurse informaticists, as well as nurse leaders. They recommended that nurses should achieve higher levels of education so that they could support functioning of healthcare delivery in our country today. They recognize that nurses are the backbone of that healthcare delivery system and having well-educated nurses was an important part of advancing healthcare delivery to provide good quality care. Nurses should be full partners in redesigning how healthcare is delivered here in the United States. And advanced practice nurses who have graduate degrees are the best informed and best skilled to be, to be able to participate in that. And as well, uh, nurses should be able to implement information in infrastructure and data collection uh, to promote workforce planning and policy making. And who better to do that than an advanced practice nurse with a graduate degree in a specialty area? Another reason to consider going back to school for your graduate degree is for magnet recognition programs. This is a credential offered by the American Nurses Credentialing Center, and it is provided to facilities who focus on improving the quality of care that they deliver. And the emphasis is on improving uh, and recognizing the influence that nurses have on quality care delivery. In order to become a magnet designated institution, 100% of nurse leaders must have a bachelor's or master's degree in nursing, and 100% of the managers must have a BSN or an MSN. The most recent standard 
80% of registered nurses should be working to obtain a degree in nursing, whether it's a bachelor or master's degree by 2020. Uh, so a great emphasis is placed on having a highly educated nursing workforce in order to influence the quality of care. The Affordable Care Act uh, allowed for new health care delivery models. We see changes in the way reimbursement is done. We're moving away from the concept of fee for service and embracing a more holistic a way to address patient needs and care across the care spectrum. Uh, this allows for a, a lot of new roles for registered nurses, a lot of leadership opportunities, things such as case management, health coaching, and increased use of technology for care management. And all of these are opportunities for nurses with graduate degrees in advanced practice to be able to influence care delivery. So when you're looking for a graduate program, you should look at programs uh, and see what are their offerings. Do they offer the kinds of programs that I'm interested in seeking? <clears throat> you look at cost, knowing that CUNY schools are very cost effective as publicly funded universities. Tuition is deliberately kept low uh, when you compare it to private institutions. Look at the time that it will take you to finish the degree. Look at where you have to go in order to finish the degree. And so part of that will determine whether you want to embrace a traditional face-to-face -face learning style or whether you want to participate in an online program. Online programs can be synchronous or asynchronous. And what does that mean? A synchronous online program means that just like a regular academic program, you meet on a particular day and you log on to your computer and you are in class for three hours. Uh, models that are asynchronous allow students to enter the classroom 24 seven over the entire semester. And there's no particular day or time that you have to be in the classroom with all of your other classmates. And that is the model that we use here at CUNY School of Professional Studies. So you don't have to reserve every Tuesday night from six to nine to attend class because the classroom is open to you seven days a week, 24 hours a day for you to enter, to identify the work, the readings, the requirements for that week, and to complete those activities on a weekly basis. Some programs have on-site requirements, uh, talking about online programs. <clears throat> they require you to be on campus, uh, maybe one full weekend a month or several times over the course of the semester. So that's a question to ask and see whether it fits into your lifestyle of going to school. Here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies, uh, we do not require students to come to the school we invite you voluntarily to participate in activities that we have, but it's not a requirement for you to come to campus. There are clinical requirements as with every graduate program and that you can do at your place of work or we can provide some assistance to you depending on what your particular track is. Uh, not all schools provide clinical placement assistance. Uh, very often students are left to figure it out on their own and find their own placement. Um, that is something that <clears throat> we do support. So if you have a need for assistance, uh, we try to uh, help you to find an appropriate clinical site in order for you to complete your practicum experience, which is part of your degree. At SPS, we accept students in both the fall and the spring. Um, that is not the case at all schools, um, so just be mindful of that. Um, when are the application due dates uh, and when are the um, students accepted into the program? So these are some of the outcomes that we focus on. Um, we hope that we will enhance your skills to be able to communicate effectively with the diverse groups that are going to be part of healthcare delivery. Um, in all tracks, we help you focus on your leadership skills and how to apply those strategies 
so that you can provide safe quality care, whether you're an educator, an informaticist, or a leader. We have a great emphasis on interprofessional care collaboration. So we focus on those competencies as well as looking at both local and global population health concerns. We hope that you will learn to optimize the emerging technologies that are available to support safe practice environments. <clears throat> this is true whether you are a nurse educator or a leader and not specific to nurse informaticists. We look at care management across disciplines and focus on prevention strategies, evidence-based care, important for advanced practice nurses to examine organizational and financial structures of healthcare delivery systems so that you know how nurses fit into the realm of things. And we hope that you will integrate your nursing and related sciences as part of your education <clears throat> and implementation of your new skills. So the CUNY School of Professional Studies is part of the City University of New York. We are CUNY's online school and we have been the leader in online learning at CUNY for the last 15 years. And so while other schools have pivoted to online learning over the past year and a half, uh, we are the experts in online learning and our staff has actually been responsible for helping to provide skills to faculty that had to move to online learning in a, in a very quick manner over this past year and a half. Our programs are regionally accredited by middle states. We are registered with the New York State Education Department Office of the Professions. And we are accredited by the Collegiate Commission on Nursing Education. So who are some of our students? Uh, they're working adults. Many of them are in career transition or like you thinking about changing from one specialty or moving from the position that you're currently in into something at, in a more advanced practice level. They often have families of their own with many responsibilities and they need a degree that fits their schedules. Some of the student services that we provide to you include a dedicated faculty advisor. So you, you will always have a faculty who will be guiding you in your course academic plan and will speak with you regularly every semester as you plan for your next uh, series of courses. You have access to all of the CUNY libraries. Our main library is the Baruch Newman Library. The wonderful thing about libraries today is that you can access just about anything online. You have a help desk with tech support. We provide tutoring both online and on campus, focusing on writing skills and uh, math skills in particular. <clears throat> There's career services to help you with your resume preparation, interview prep, creating a social media profile, among other things. And we do have mental health counseling available for our students that's free for short-term um, uh, issues that come up for students. Some of the unique experiences that we have here at SPS, uh, we work with virtual patients in the Shadow Health platform. <clears throat> this is an online virtual patient program that you uh, use a lot in your graduate programs, especially in your advanced health assessment and advanced uh, pharmacology courses. Uh, there's leadership opportunities to uh, become a member of Sigma Theta Tau, uh, which is an international nursing honor society with many opportunities um, for professional development as well. And we offer uh, a variety of professional development workshops over the course of the year uh, for students, uh, both graduate and undergraduate. So what's it like to learn online? Uh, some of you who are contemplating going back to school may, may not have been in school for a number of years. And so you might wanna think about what, what does it mean uh, to go back to school online? You certainly know what you are getting when you go to class face to face. 
Um, but if an online environment uh, seems uh, more suited to your current needs, then it's worth taking a look at this uh, video clip that we will provide to you um, as part of the slide deck. Our classes are asynchronous, as I mentioned. This means that uh, they're open every day, 24 seven, when the semester starts so that you can access it at any time. We keep our classes small at the graduate level, no more than 15 to 20 students. Students are expected to be engaged as well as the instructor. Um, and that's done through writing and communication on the discussion boards. Do know that there is weekly work. We start every week on a Monday, end it on a Sunday. And each week of the semester, you have assignments. So you have readings to do, lectures and videos to review, questions to research and answer. And each course has an average of three to five major assignments for you to complete. And it is important that you have a computer in order to be able to function well in an online learning environment. Um, you can't rely on just a phone or a tablet. Uh, you will need a computer for some of the activities that you will be, will be required to do. So some questions to ask yourself. I have access to a computer with high speed internet connection. Um, that is something that you do need. You cannot rely on the internet connection from a local store or uh, a coffee shop. You have to have access to your own. Um, it's important that you don't rely just at, on work because oftentimes your facilities will have firewalls that will prevent you from accessing your school course website. Are you comfortable in installing uh, software on your computer? I think most people uh, can do that well. Uh, you get a message that you have to download an update um, and, and it's a simple process. So if you feel comfortable with that, then you can certainly proceed with an online program. I'm proficient in using search engines and advanced search options. And these are skills necessary to do research. So do you know how to do a search on Google? Uh, can you apply those skills to searching databases in the library? And we provide guidelines and skills and resources and technical help in order for you to be able to do that. And most important, uh, do you have 10 to 12 hours per week to dedicate to each of your three credit courses? All courses are three credits except for the final graduate practicum. And our students have reported on average, they have to allocate 10 to 12 hours each week for every three credit course in order to complete the readings, review the lectures, the videos, research the assignments, and respond. So look at your life, look at what you have going on and your responsibilities and determine, do you have the time to dedicate? You're not gonna be traveling back and forth to school. You're not gonna be sitting in a classroom for three hours, but you do have to allocate some time in order to be able to be successful. Important to prioritize your activities, set yourself up with a calendar <clears throat> and block out time where you can read, research, and respond. Remember that each week there will be something for you to do. So that might be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to when you go to a face-to-face -face class where the teacher stands up there and talks for three hours and you sit in the classroom. In an online program, there's an expectation that you will be more engaged on a regular basis um, with your classmates and with your instructor each and every week. As I mentioned, you need a computer, uh, you need good Wi-Fi. You can do many things on a mobile device, such as a phone or a tablet, um, but you will need a computer in order to be able to complete some of the activities and know where you can get good tech support. We do have a help desk here uh, to help you navigate things. Um, so it's important to know who to turn to in order to be able to access the technical support that you need. Time management is very important. Uh, you need to make yourself a plan. Um, how do you block out the time that you'll need in order to be able to do your work? And this is, a, again, a little link 
that you can access after we send you the slides. Um, it was made by some of the students in our school uh, and they share tips and time savers uh, about how they were able to manage their time while living very full lives as I'm sure many of you do. So the learning management system that we use here at CUNY is called Blackboard. And this is uh, um, an image of one of our courses, Nursing 611 Advanced Practice Health Assessment. Uh, you'll see that we have a menu tab on the left there. And we try to keep all of our programs consistent in terms of the menu options. So you'll always see an announcement tab, uh, an inf instructor information tab, which will tell you who your instructor is, a little bit about them, uh, when their office hours are, how to contact them, et cetera. Uh, there's course information where you'll find the syllabus and the textbooks. Um, the textbooks listing is always available in CUNY First, which is where you register for classes. So you'll always know well ahead of time what textbooks you will need. Weekly materials, as I mentioned, we function on a weekly learning module system. And so every week uh, there will be activities for you to do and complete. There's a major discussion board, which is a, a big part of the online learning program. This is a sample of a weekly folder. And you can see that uh, there's a list of things to do. And then you would go into the folder and you would find the specific chapters, the articles you have to read, the videos to watch, the lectures to review, et cetera, um, and complete the discussions on a weekly basis. Uh, discussion boards are a big part of an online learning course. Uh, generally, you'll have 10 to 12 discussions. And as I mentioned, someplace between three and five major assignments that you'll need to complete. The tuition rates right now are the same from 2020 to 2021. We have not heard or seen of any increase at this point. Um, that would be announced well ahead of time. Uh, so this is uh, per credit um, and then per semester rates. <clears throat> um, all students, whether you're in New York state or in another state pay what we call the in-state rates. That's what these are, the in-state rates. So if you uh, live in New Jersey or Connecticut or Pennsylvania, you would pay the same tuition as our in-state students. Financial aid is available if you qualify, and we encourage everyone to uh, review that and see if there are opportunities for financial aid, grants, loans, et cetera. So these are our, our degree options. Uh, each master's degree is 45 credits. As I mentioned, the MS in nursing education, informatics, and organizational leadership. Um, our advanced certificates are 18 credits, and they include the four specialty courses, as well as the practicum for the specific uh, track. So that's, that's something to keep in mind that whether you take the regular master's degree or the advanced certificate, there's always going to be a practicum requirement. Application deadlines, generally, Applications for spring have a priority due date of early November and a regular due date of first week of December. Um, for applications for fall, uh, we generally do the same type of priority deadline in April and then a regular deadline in May. What's the advantage of a priority deadline? Uh, you get a, a faster response so that you know and can plan accordingly. So part of the curriculum includes nine core courses for 27 credits. And as I mentioned, four specialty courses in the selected track. Um, and you also have one graduate elective and that's a graduate elective that you can choose from one of the other nursing disciplines. Um, or you can also choose from one of our other graduate programs here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Uh, so some students take their graduate elective in the business program or the psychology program, disability studies, health information management, or any of the other options that we have as well. 
The advanced certificates are 18 credits. These are postmasters, as I mentioned. If you already have a master's in nursing, you the state does not require you to repeat an entire master's in order to get the specialty added to your credentials. So you can have an advanced certificate in nursing education. Um, or informatics or organizational leadership. And the focus of the advanced certificates is the specialty courses for those tracks, as well as the uh, practicum, which is 135 hours. So these are some of the courses in our core um, policy and ethics, as well as when they're offered at this point in time. <clears throat> We are working on developing more courses to be available in summer session. Uh, so this will change. Nursing 601 is a theory and role development. 602 is healthcare finance and management. Then we have our 3P courses, which are the same courses that are required in nurse practitioner programs, advanced health assessment, advanced practice pathophysiology, and advanced practice pharmacology. Every student is required to take an advanced nursing informatics course. Students in the informatics track then go on to take additional specialty courses in that. And then statistics and research are also part of the core. These are some of the specialty courses uh, for our uh, different tracks. You can see that our nursing education track focuses on things like curriculum and program planning, pedagogical strategies, as well as measurement and evaluation. Informatics, you're gonna be looking at decision support and information systems, how to do systems analysis and design for quality outcomes, uh, nursing informatics applications, and your practicum project will be uh, focusing on an informatics application project, working with informaticists throughout our New York City area. Um, and if you are an out-of-state student, uh, we're happy to help facilitate a placement with you in your respective state and in your respective facility, if that's what you choose. Organizational leadership, um, you, you consider things that impact how you are going to function from a systems perspective. So managing different healthcare disparities, a strategic planning for quality and safety, a transformational leadership, and then, of course, a leadership practicum. And all, of, as I mentioned, also require a graduate elective that can be taken from one of the other nursing tracks or one of the other graduate programs at CUNY SPS. As I mentioned, practicums are required for all tracks, 135 hours. Your options to complete these include self-placement, which we highly encourage, we think, Completing your practicum at your place of work is a great opportunity for you to see your organization from a different perspective. Um, we're happy to facilitate that. Uh, we have contracts with many, many facilities throughout the New York City and New York State area. And we're happy to facilitate those opportunities in other states if that's where you are residing. We can also help uh, with some placements. So for example, some of our nursing education students, um, we work with all of the CUNY nursing programs and, and there are 13 CUNY nursing programs in our system. Uh, so we have students that work in uh, CUNY schools. Uh, we also have some students that work in our online programs here. And then we do have many uh, nurses who uh, want to become clinical educators. And so we help facilitate those placements in facilities in which they work or in which we have partnerships. Same is true for our organizational leadership and our informatics program as well. So the MS in nursing education, as we mentioned, focusing on how do you develop a curriculum? What are educational strategies that can be used? How do you test and measure whether students learned something? focusing on accreditation because this is something that's required whether you are in a school or whether you are in a clinical setting is your program accredited um, and looking at the preparation of the future rn workforce is something that's very important to nurse educators uh, whether you are 
in a school or whether you are a clinical educator in a facility and you're onboarding new staff. Our leadership program focusing on skill development in leadership, as well as how to work among interprofessional colleagues. Uh, an important thing for our organizational leadership students to understand is that they have financial uh, and systems analysis skills uh, so that they understand that choices that they make do impact the bottom line and how do you fund different initiatives and programs. And therein comes uh, the ability to do policy analysis. Where are the trends? Where are things going? And how does our particular facility pivot to embrace those trends? The MS in nursing informatics, you're going to be looking at data analysis and how to apply what you're able to mine from the data. How does that impact decisions that are made at your facility? how to use technology in an optimal way and how it can be designed to improve care and also how the impact of data management can enhance quality and safety in care delivery. Admission criteria includes a GPA of 3.0 or better from your undergraduate nursing program. You should have an unencumbered RN license and registration. You'll be asked to do an admission essay, provide two letters of recommendation, one from a nursing faculty or a nurse educator that's familiar with you, and one from a nursing supervisor or a manager who has directly supervised you in your current practice. We ask students to provide a summary of an evidence-based practice project in which they've been involved. And I'll speak about a few more details of that in just a moment and provide a copy of your resume. So for the EBP project summary, um, this can be a capstone project that you did in your undergraduate program, uh, which focuses on evidence-based practice applications, or it can be a quality improvement initiative um, that you were part of at your facility. We, we certainly don't expect that you were the leader of the project, but oftentimes quality improvement initiatives are launched in your facility because that is a requirement from the Department of Health, from Joint Commission, um, et cetera. Every agency has to have a focus on quality improvement. So there are always quality improvement initiatives that are part and parcel of your facility's operation. So for example, uh, did your facility implement an updated fall prevention policy. <clears throat> what was your role in implementing that? And can you provide a summary of it and some of the evidence as to why the decision was made to implement it? Same could be true about changes and updates in a pain management policy or a strength policy. There are lots of examples that you can think of uh, that you can look at in your own institutions that address quality improvement, and then what was your role in it? And how can you describe the rationale for it? And what was the evidence behind it? Provide references to this evidence as well. To apply to the program, you would go to the CUNY SPS webpage, uh, look for a menu tab called Academics and the Graduate Programs, select which particular graduate program you would like to apply to, and then you can click the apply now button. If you have been a previous CUNY student, you would use your CUNY first account to submit the application. If not, you would register and create a new account. And the same is true for your advanced certificates. You would go to the web page, look for academics, certificate programs, and then select the specific certificate program that you would like to apply to. Use the apply now button. The application is all online. This is what the application page would look like. Uh, know that you're, make sure you're looking for a graduate degree. Um, if you already have a CUNY First account, you can just complete your user login. Um, if not, you can just create an account. 
So in closing, I want to just highlight for you uh, that shift happens. And again, this is a link of, to a video that you might find interesting. Um, will you be prepared when this shift comes? Um, many, not too long ago, um, a lot of our files and documentation on, on students was done with paper. Uh, now we have really migrated to the use of uh, electronic health records and digital collection of data. Um, in the past, we've had giant clunky desktop computers. Um, we've moved more towards using tablets and laptops. Um, these are just some examples of how things have shifted just in healthcare in the past number of years and more on the way. You don't always know what this change will be, but the best way to prepare yourself for these changes is to educate yourself and learn how to respond to change. For more information about our programs, you can visit us at our webpage. You can call us. Uh, you can write to us at nursing at sps.cuny.edu. Visit our Facebook page and see what we have going on here. There's our Facebook page. And I'm happy to take some questions right now. And I'm going to open up our Q&A to see if there's anything there. And I'll also open up our, our chat box. OK. So I have a question from someone who uh, reports that they have a, a bachelor's in nursing and then a master's in health informatics and analytics and wanted to know if they would qualify for a post-master's nurse informatics certificate. Um, so question, to respond to that question, according to the New York State Education Department guidelines, uh, in order to have uh, qualify for a post master's advanced certificate in nursing, you have to have a master's in nursing already. It's possible that we might be able to transfer in some of those credits and apply them to the master's program. Uh, but as per the New York State Education Department, you would need to have a master's in nursing uh, first. And would this program help in preparing me for the national certification exam in nursing informatics? Yes, um, we have um, plans for students to be able to do that. Uh, one of the things that uh, the national certification asks for is that students complete a specific number of hours. Um, so those students that are interested in that, we try to work with them uh, so that they can complete the necessary hours needed in order to sit for the exam. Okay. Let's see if there's any other questions that we have here. Let's say I have a question about uh, someone who asked, are student self-placements for practicum considered externships? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Uh, when students uh, do self-placement, um, generally it's the agency's decision if they want to have an affiliation agreement with the school and we work to facilitate that. Um, as far as an externship, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a specific question that you have in mind in, in regard to that, uh, but practicums that involve clinical um, our, our student clinical placements, and we work with facilities to make those requests so that students can complete their clinical hours, their practicum hours. Okay, so here's another good question. Um, student is a uh, undergraduate student. Um, preparing to graduate from the undergraduate program in the spring of 2022, and wanting to know if these programs are offered for new best BSN grads. Uh, so my response is yes. Um, we do not have a specific number of years of practice that you have to have completed in order to um, enroll in the graduate program. You can apply while you're in your last semester of your undergraduate program. 
your application would be reviewed. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, an offer, if it's made, would be conditional upon your completion of your undergraduate program. Um, there are a number of graduate programs that won't uh, consider you for admission until you have completed one or two years of nursing practice. Um, our philosophy is if you are looking to go to a graduate program to be a nurse educator, a nurse informaticist, a nurse leader, um, you may not have those skills yet. Um, and that those are skills and knowledge that you would gain as part of the program. And then you would gain clinical practice in these areas as part of the program as well. So you do not have to have specific work experience in the areas or as a practicing nurse in order to be able to apply for the program. See if there's any other questions that we have. Okay. I'm not seeing anything specific. Can you apply as an undergraduate despite not having completed the RN license exam? Um, you have to be licensed in order to apply for the graduate program. That is one of the criteria. Another question, are there any statistics on employment in the respective fields post-graduation or data on where students work post-graduation? Great question. Um, our informatics program, for example, is um, relatively new. Um, so we will have our first graduating class this spring. So we have no data on post-graduation for those programs. Um, and our um, other programs, we have um, a small cohort that graduated last year. Um, and all of those students are employed in the areas in which they wanted to be. So the students that majored in nursing education are working as clinical nurse educators. The students that were in the leadership program are working in leadership positions. Excellent question and an important thing to ask. And of course, as our students continue to complete the program, exit and graduate, uh, we will continue to gather data and collect information uh, so that we can share that with new and incoming students as well. I don't see any other questions at this time. Um, just want to highlight if something comes to mind, uh, feel free to contact us at nursing at sps.cuny.edu. We'll be happy to answer a question that comes up for you that we may not have addressed. Um, the uh, video recording of tonight's session will be made available to you once it's processed and our uh, SPS marketing department will send that out to you uh, within the next week or so, so that you have it. Uh, we encourage you to continue your search, um, to ask good questions, uh, find the right program that works for you, um, explore different options, determine what it is that you want, and we wish you the best of luck um, in your search for a graduate program. We thank you very much for attending. Um, and we look forward to the possibility of working with you in the future here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Thank you.